When I did my series on e-mountain bikes, I found that they are quite controversial. However, there's one area where I think most people would agree that e-bikes are a positive, and that is commuting. Anytime you can get people out of cars and onto bicycles, it's a win-win, and e-bikes help people do that. So I'm gonna be looking today at an e-bike from a company called KVO. They're a newer e-bike company. Currently, they have three models, and they're focused more on the commuting side. The one I'm gonna be looking at today is the Hurricane. It's an $1,100 e-bike. It's a road e-bike with flat bars, which is my favorite style of commuter bike. I had a commuter bike years ago that I rode to and from school. When I was working and going to school at the same time, I would ride it to work, to school, back to work, and home. I put a lot of miles on that thing, but it was a flat bar road bike. And I really liked it because of the agility, the comfort, especially when you're around cars. And so that's what this one is. I'm gonna take it out of the box and show it to you. There's a few things that really intrigue me about this bike. One is it's light, it's 36 pounds. The other thing is it's a single speed and not only is it a single speed, but it's a belt drive single speed, which means the maintenance is gonna be very low. Like I said, I'm gonna just show it in the box. It's packaged really well. I wanna show that to you in case you're interested in picking up one of these. And then I'll take it out, put it together, and then we'll take a good close up look at it hit the road and I'll give you my first impressions and I'll do a follow-up review after this, after I get some commuting miles because my commuting miles are actually gonna be on dirt roads. And this bike has 32C tires. So, you know, I think it'll be pretty good on the dirt roads and yeah, let's check it out. So there it is in the box. Like I said, it's packaged pretty well. I don't think there's going to be a lot of assembly on this one. So let's pull it out and check out this 36 pound e-road bike. While I'm assembling this thing, I want to show what you get in the box. The charger, which I've already plugged it in. So the way that you know it's charged is that light will turn green. So it was red just for a few minutes and then it turned green. So it's got a full battery, which I'm kind of stoked about because I want to get out and try this thing in the neighborhood. So you actually get a water bottle cage. You get a multi-tool. That's a nice touch. It's the first bike I've ever gotten that came with its own multi-tool. Some, you know, just cheap little plastic pedals, which I will not use. I'll put on my clipless pedals. And then the skewer for the front. It also comes with a set of fenders. I'm not sure if I'll use these because I may put this on a bike rack and I have the type of bike rack that comes over the front tire. So that one won't work for the front for my bike rack, but the rear I may put on. So the build on this is pretty easy. All you have to do is put on the front wheel, put on the handlebars. All right, let's get this out of the way first as we take a look at the bike. Look at the spacer stack on that steer tube. So originally I thought I was gonna to have to cut that down because I thought it was just really high, but when I started just riding the bike around, getting everything set up, I realized the handlebars are still pretty low. So it's just that the top tube is really low on this bike. So I will have to leave that as is. Looking at a few components before I talk about the frame and the belt drive, so the saddle is actually pretty comfortable. It's wider than saddles that I usually use, but it's actually not too bad. I think I'll keep it on for a while. I may put on a WTB Silverado, which is my favorite saddle. This bike comes with a little light. I don't think it's going to be bright enough to really commute in the total dark, but it's definitely a light where cars can see you. I would put on a commuter light if I was going to really ride this bike at night. Like I said, it does come with a water bottle cage. There it is installed. I put on my clipless pedals. The crank arms are 170s on this bike. Now, as you can see, this is a bike that has a motor in the rear hub. And of course you can see the belt drive. Now, the one downside that I see to this bike is the fact that you have to have a wrench to get the rear wheel off. So you cannot use an Allen wrench. You have to use an open face wrench. And that's not something that's on a multi-tool. And so if you are commuting and get a flat, you're pretty much up the creek unless you bring an open face wrench with you. I also don't know how to disconnect this. I'm gonna actually reach out to the company and ask because I'm curious. So this is the wire going into the motor. There's gotta be a way to disconnect that so you can remove the rear wheel. I did not put the fenders on. I decided just to hold off on those for a while. And it looks like there's brazons for a rack. So you could put a little gear rack on this bike. The seat post, by the way, is a quick release. This bike comes with a Panasonic battery and it's in the down tube and it's not a removable battery. So if you watch some of my videos of reviewing the Niner Rip E9, it had a removable battery. This one does not have a removable battery. The bars on this are pretty narrow. And then you've got your control unit. The way this works is you hold the left button down for a couple seconds. It'll come on 
and then you can select your modes. So by default, it's in zero. I don't know if you can see that one in the video, but that's the lowest pedal assist, two, and then it goes up to three. If you wanna turn on the light, you just hit that left button one time, the light comes on, tap it again, the light goes off, and there's a little icon to let you know that the light is on. It comes with a little bell. You're not gonna scare semi-truck drivers with that thing, but it's there in case you need it. A really nice touch to this bike is it comes with disc brakes. They're mechanical disc brakes, so pretty low maintenance. That's pretty cool. And there's a little spot for a kickstand. The bike does not come with a kickstand. On the website it says it does, but I mean, that doesn't matter. I wouldn't put it on if I did get one with it. But that's where you would put the kickstand in case you wanna get a kickstand for this bike. There's your charge port on the left side of the down tube. Just plug it in right there. I looked online, it says it takes about four to five hours to charge. I would assume that's from depleted all the way. Now let's go over some stats on this bike. All right, so looking at some stats on their website, first of all, the price, there it is, $1,099. And you can order this bike directly from KBO's website. The Panasonic battery is a 345 watt hour battery. The hub motor will put out a peak of 350 watts. Like I said earlier, you've got three levels of pedal assist. The estimated range, 18 to 53 miles. So that, of course, depends on the level of pedal assist. So it looks like at level three pedal assist, you'll get to go 18 miles. And then, of course, longer if you use a lower level of pedal assist. I think I mentioned earlier the tires are 700 by 32C and the bike weighs 36 pounds, which is pretty light for an e-bike. Now let's take it out for a test drive. And I will mention... I'm gonna probably talk about this on the test drive. So this rear tire has a pretty bad hop in it right now. And I think it's because the bead dips down into the rim on one spot. So I've got to work on that. I'll probably deflate it and try to get that bead out. So yeah, I noticed that when I was just riding it around, getting the saddle height and everything set up. All right, here we go. I'm starting off with number one on the pedal assist. And you can definitely feel the motor kick in. Let's do a hard stop here. Yeah, brakes are pretty decent. I mean, they're disc brakes, so you've got to do about 10 hard stops to seat in the pads, but pretty powerful. The nice thing about disc brakes, of course, is they work well, even in wet weather. All right, let's go up to number two on the pedal assist. Like I mentioned earlier, I like the flat bar road bikes. The agility is really nice. Like this bike doesn't feel too twitchy, but it's definitely agile. And if you do city commuting, that's a plus. And the more narrow bars I found are a plus for city commuting. If you're used to a mountain bike with really wide handlebars, these are gonna feel pretty narrow. My Enduro bike has 800s. Okay, now I'm gonna go up to number three on the pedal assist. Let's start from pretty slow speed. So here's what I notice is you gotta, oh, there's a gopher turtle, hey gopher turtle. You've gotta give a pretty good effort to start off. Like you don't feel the motor kick in right away. It's not until you get to about maybe 10 to 12 miles an hour that you really feel the motor kick in, which is different from the Niner Rip E9 that I demoed for a while, where even at slow speeds, you put in effort, especially on the higher pedal assist, that bike, as soon as you start pedaling, the motor is pretty powerful. This acceleration is more gradual. You can definitely feel the motor, but once you get up to the speed that you wanna hold, anything above probably 10 miles an hour, the motor just, you can feel it and it just holds there. Like I'm not putting in hardly any effort. I'm going 17 miles an hour. So I'm at 18 miles an hour right now. And I'm actually, I'm tracking this on my Garmin Vivo Active 4 and the speedometer on this bike is very accurate. I noticed on the Niner Rip E9, it was off a mile or two. This one's really accurate. So at about 18 miles an hour is where I'm at my normal cadence which is around 85 RPM. Now let's get up to about 21. So I'm holding 20 miles an hour with very little effort. 
And I can really feel that rear tire. I gotta fix that. That thing is hopping. So at about 21 is where you feel the pedal assist start to fade away. So if I was gonna commute on this bike, I would hold probably around 18 miles an hour. And the reason I like an e-bike for commuting is when I'm going to work in the morning, I don't wanna push hard. I just wanna to get to work and then get my workout in on the way home. It's just the way I roll. Let's do another stop. Yeah, really decent brakes actually. Kind of impressed with the brakes. So I can feel the motor around five miles an hour, but it doesn't really start to kick in until I get to around 10 miles an hour. I can get up to 17, 18 pretty quickly from 10 miles an hour. It's definitely a good bike to work on your spin since it's a single speed. So here's the deal, like if you lived in a super hilly place, like I'm thinking of San Francisco. So if you've lived in a place with a lot of really big hills, this is probably not your bike since it's a single speed. I think you need to be going about at least 10 miles an hour. And I'm not sure if this motor would be strong enough to really take over at a low RPM. Like I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what I think is the lowest RPM. So, you know, six miles an hour, I'd say. So I, I'll have to take it onto hill, some hills when I do my commute because there are some hills and I can tell you what I think about, you know, riding this bike on hills. So, you know, just my initial impressions, but you know, I live in a pretty flat area. We've got hills, but they're only like 5% grade. So yeah, 17, 18, you could hold all day long on the number three pedal assist with hardly any effort at all. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the initial test ride of this bike. So that's a first look at the KBO Hurricane, which is a flat bar road bike. That's an e-bike. A really decent bike for the price for 1100 bucks. And the little accessories that you get, a multi-tool, a bell, a little light. I mean, if you're wanting to get into commuting on an e-bike and you want something really simple, I mean, this is really a decent option. So I'll do some more riding on this bike. I'm gonna take it to work and back quite a bit and I'll use it on dirt roads and I'll let you know how it goes. There's really not much I can fault so far on this bike other than the fact that it's going to be a little bit of a hassle to get the rear wheel off in case you gotta change the tire and of course coming out of the box with a hop in the rear tire. Other than that, really decent bike for the price. All right, any questions or comments, drop those below. Have you ridden this bike by chance? Let me know your thoughts on it and uh, let me know how it's done long-term. Thanks for watching.